Hi, what's up guys? In this video, we are making a Snapchat geofilter using Procreate. Um, iPad 6th generation, just like a felt tip stylus, nothing fancy, no Apple Pencil, no pressure sensitivity. Super easy, you can do it with your finger and an iPad. So, if I'm on Snapchat's website, um, snapchat.com, it has a website, right? If you use Snapchat, you're probably familiar with what a geofilter is. It's basically a filter that you can apply to your photos based on a certain location. What's really cool about these filters is that you are able to create them and upload them yourself. Now, I'm just gonna be making a simple 2D, still not animated, no augmented reality, face changing, filter today there's some really cool apps to do the face changing ones if I scroll down here like if you click on uh, the augmented reality lenses you click learn more they have their own software um, you need a like a, a PC or a Mac to use it but so I'm just gonna make a simple one on the iPad today um, if I go back up we are making a community filter so what's cool about the community filters is that if you design it and you follow Snapchat's guidelines, then as long as you are designing it for a location that is public, such as a city, like the city of Chicago, or a public school or university, such as the University of Iowa, right? You can upload your filter, show Snapchat where on the map it's supposed to be, and then it's free, and if they like your filter and it follows their guidelines, it will become the official filter. Um, if you go to Conant High School, like uh, my students do, you probably know that some like the three or four Conant High School filters uh, exist. Those for the most part, I think there's only one of them that didn't come from my class, from my Digital Media 1 or my Graphic Design students. So, here's what it looks like when I'm supposed to upload a design to Snapchat. Uh, I think they even have their own like little interface of design here. But if we click on the submission guidelines hidden down here in the corner, we'll see what we need to design for, right? So I scroll down, I scroll down, I scroll down. Uh, it's just some general tips, pick a location, blah, blah, blah. What I really care about right now, look, they have even like templates for Photoshop and Illustrator. Use those if you're using Photoshop or Illustrator. I am using Procreate. Um, but here's here's the good stuff, right? So you're going to need to include a good description of your community filter and why it's re relevant to your community. Your file needs to be 1080 pixels wide by 2340 pixels tall. That's important, right? Uh, place text and important elements outside the buffer zone. So there's this 210 pixel at the top and the bottom. So I got to avoid the top and bottom. Um, keep your file size under 300 kilobytes. So let's make it 72 pixels per inch and then save it as a PNG with transparency enabled. So here's some examples. And like while I'm at it, I... Uh, with my graphic design, we talk about our brands and the logos that we design as graphic designers. And a lot of brands will pay for custom Snapchat filters. Um, so Gatorade's got some cool ones. Taco Bell's got the face changing ones, right? But like Starbucks always has some really cool simple ones, right? And look at that cup. That cup is not just the Starbucks logo. It's a few shapes that were designed to make the Starbucks cup. It doesn't look too difficult. There's the curly straw, the text, the, like, the little lips that would like potentially go on someone's mouth, right? If they were taking a selfie with it. Like, I love that. Here's this McDonald's one, and look at this McDonald's one. It's food, it's falling, it's relevant to McDonald's, and it goes to, it, like, you can use this at any McDonald's or whenever this article came out, right? But look at that design. It's just a bunch of rounded rectangles. That's nothing special, dude. Like, my Digital One students could probably do that after, like, one day with, like, Procreate, Factorinator, Illustrator, whatever, right? Um, here's another Starbucks one. They do the red cups. So you got to think about, like, what your brand does for certain holidays or certain times of the year, right? Does you, do you have, like, a special, like, fall or autumn one that is different than your winter one, right? Um, American Express is a small business, even though like American Express is a huge bank, whatever. Um, I love this one for Disneyland because it gives something for the uh, for the Snapchat user to interact with. It's like a little bow for them to uh, put on their head. And then the Disneyland logo with a pattern. It's never just like the logo sitting there. The logo sitting there is so boring. Um, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, let me re remind, I don't know, remember those guidelines. It was 1080 by 2340, right? Yeah. So let's get after it. I'm going to open up Procreate um, and start the design. You see, I've been designing these in class already. Let's hit the plus sign. Let's make a custom size. Now, I got to make sure that I have pixels selected. And then my width, 1080. My height, 2340. And I'm going to keep that at 72. DPI or pixels per inch, whatever software you're in, right? Um, so that it stays a pretty small file size. Hit create. <clears throat> so my graphic designers, we have logos, right? We've been designing logos for a while and brands. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import my logo. I had saved it as a PNG, a transparent file. Let's go ahead and add insert photo. I saved it as a PNG from a Vectornator. There's other tutorials on my channel for learning Vectornator. Um, I'm hoping to be using the iPad Illustrator soon. So let's go ahead and bring in this transparent PNG. Uh, this sort of doesn't look transparent. We'll deal with that in a minute. Um, 
Now let's get to our design. So I've been playing far too much Dungeons and Dragons over the last eight months uh, over Zoom because it's just something to do, right? Um, so let's do like a Dungeons and Dragons themed, uh, like themed addition to our logo. So I'm gonna, yeah, there it is. It's not even transparent yet. That I might have imported the wrong one. Did I just make the same? I just made the same mistake. Tell you what, let's problem solve, right? I know how to edit things. Well, what I can do is I can select, or I'm sorry, select automatic, click on the white space. Whoops, automatic, automatic, automatic. Oh man, I'm messing up. Automatic, click on the white space, grab my eraser tool, and then go to town, right? That's not a very big eraser. And then go to town. Why is it not erasing? Oh, it did erase. Cool. It's just still selected. Boom. <laughs> All right. So let's design something. Let's design like a, like a ribbon, like a banner, like, you know, their classical, like medieval looking banner. Um, if I go ahead and make a new layer, I'm going to grab my uh, handy dandy uh, monoline brush. Um, let's do the top of the banners. It's kind of like S looking curve. Uh, I'm going to draw an S looking curve. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to increase my streamline to make it a simpler stroke and not so jittery because my hand isn't still because I'm not still. Because life isn't still. Anyway, uh, so there's an S. Now I gotta draw another one or I could just play smart and duplicate, right? Duplicate, move that down. Now I got a duplicate. Cool. Now what I can do is merge these two layers. I'm gonna slide to the right and then pinch them together, right? We've done this in other tutorials. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect these. I'm just going to draw a line. And I could press and hold to make it a straight line, but I like it being a little bit organic right now. Cool. Um, so I can fill that if I want to, right? But the next thing I can do is like to just add a little bit of embellishment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of continue that guide and draw something like this. So it looks like there's some space behind it. Um, it's a little rough. Let's see if I can do a better job on this one. Continue. I think it curves up as soon as it breaks. There we go. Let's try that again. What's really awesome about digital painting is you can just undo. On a computer, it's like Command Z. On this, it's tapping with two fingers. So easy. So let's go ahead and uh, drag this color over there. Let's grab a darker version of this color. I just have this palette saved. You can use whatever colors you want, you know. Boom, and I've got this super easy, cool ribbon um, on one layer. Let's put that over my logo. So it's kind of like wrapping my logo. Scale that up, scale that up. Maybe just scale the logo down. Imagine that, right? Um, cool, so I can select both of these, transform them, move them somewhere. I gotta stay above the bottom. Let's add some more to it. Cause I like, I don't know, things get, things get boring. Uh, some text. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some text. Nope, I missed. Add text. Let's type out my name. All caps, because we're yelling. Jenner. Let's use a better font than whatever I have going on right here. Um, I love I love Futura. I love having your next right now. Uh, let's go ahead and make that bold. Done. Let's bring this on a layer above the ribbon. But now I got this problem, right? That like my text is on a straight line and it doesn't curve. If I'm in Illustrator, I can like use text on a path. I can do a lot of things in other software. On Procreate, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, and I might need to like fast forward a little bit in a minute here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna first off duplicate my layer because I'm about to edit the text and I always wanna keep that text in case I misspelled something, right? I'm gonna tap the layer and click rasterize. And what that does is it converts the text into pixels. That means I can apply effects to it, but I can no longer change what it says. Um, so now what I could do is I can move that. I could like kind of rotate it a little bit because the ribbon's rotated. And then I could select each letter whoop, with the free form select, freehand select, right? Select each letter, switch back to the arrow tool and then rotate, move each letter accordingly. So select it with the free form. I select a little bit of the J there. Select it with the free form. I did that again. Grab my arrow tool and rotate and just play with the spacing. Make sure that the spacing is a little consistent here. I'm gonna fast forward because this is probably a little boring to watch. 
just got to fix that N here. And I mean, hey, you don't need to, to do this crazy text, right? Maybe you want to make your text in another software. Maybe you want to do something easier than what I just did. I'm not in charge of how you live your life. But uh, after that, I got, uh, I got this text. I can go ahead and uh, squish that down here, select all these layers, and now, you know, put it somewhere like in the corner here, keep it about 210 pixels above the, um, uh, above the bottom. Um, but now let's like think about what else to add. Some other decorations, right? The Starbucks one had like the stars on it. Like it just looks cool if there's stuff at the top and the bottom, I think. Um, so Dungeons and Dragons, we use dice a lot. There's this really cool thing called a, an icosahedron, which is a 20-sided polyhedron, also known as a D20. So uh, <laughs> lost the recording for a little bit there, but we are back. Um, anyway, so I could try to draw this shape, this 20-sided polyhedron shape. That's a little complicated and, and, and my hand's not too still. So what I could also do is because I am working digitally, I can use the tools available and I can trace. There's nothing wrong with tracing. We've been doing it for centuries. Um, it's how we learn how to draw. You know, I learn how to play music by like tracing someone else's sheet music, right? I, I learn by by copying. Um, and then I'm able to draw it myself eventually if I practice for long enough. So let's go ahead and insert that photo of the icosahedron, also known as a D20 to my Dungeons and Dragons friend, uh, fans, friends. So I got that image in there. Then what I can do is I can pick a color from my color palette um, that I got all nice and saved right there. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to the, let's say the brush pen, just to get a little bit like a, a more hand-drawn aesthetic here. Um, make a new layer, so I'm not tracing on my, or not drawing on my photo layer. And let's just trace this out really quickly. Um, ba -ba -da -ba. And I'm gonna keep it like this hand-drawn aesthetic to make it a little bit more organic and show that this is not just some random mathematical photo. And now if I hide that photo or even delete it, look at this, I've got a really quick D20. So what I like to do now is I could like throw that up here in the corner and then zoom in. And then I could like, just to create uh, some repetition, I could duplicate that and then adjust it. This is one of my favorite things to do, duplicate things and then change things. I'm gonna flip it around so it looks a little bit different, maybe even rotate it. I don't know, go crazy, right? I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one again move it to be a little bit smaller maybe flip it once more right and now i've got something uh pretty cool happening at the top but because snapchat's guidelines said it has to be respect the buffer zone i'm going to put it down here right so i can imagine that now with this filter if i hide the background if i hide the background that you know the user would have their face like around here or something um, depends on what they're taking a photo of. And I got this pretty cool thing. So let's export it. I make sure that to keep transparency right, I don't have a background color on. Now, if I go to share in my options, I'm gonna share it as a PNG, because that's what Snapchat wanted, to share it as a PNG. Click save image. And provided that everything worked, provided that everything worked, now I have a PNG of my filter, look at that, it's all transparent and nice, and I can upload that to Snapchat's website. Now, this isn't a community filter. This this filter has nothing to do with the community. It has nothing to do with uh, with anywhere. Uh, so I would need to pay because it's a branded filter, right? Um, I'm not gonna do that, but this is where I could upload it. So, um, I know this tutorial ran a little bit long, uh, but I hope uh, it gives you some ideas of how to play and maybe build your own filters for uh, if you're with me, Conan High School, or uh, our community, or wherever you are. Um, let's make some more interesting looking filters. Thank you for watching.